Welcome to another Dreams tutorial and today I want to uh, talk about uh, using invisible or disappearing objects as part of gameplay. So um, we've got our gameplay figure here and here is a flagpole and um, some platforms that I used in, um, in my first game called Peg Like Pete's Treasure. And it looks like a fairly thing, easy thing to get to the top and get the coin that's up there. We jump to here, we jump to here, and then we say, oh, after a second, those platforms disappear. And so there's a time element involved. We have to get to those platforms before they disappear. And then up here, and we get the coin. So those are uh, objects that disappear uh, as, we, as we get to them. Uh, let's go back and uh, rewind and... Uh, you can see here the platforms are all there and yet when we step on the, each platform the next one after two seconds and there's on a timer let's take a look at this now we'll go into um, edit mode and let's take a look at this um, at this one right here um, we want to turn on so we can see get the connectors and we can see zones and we can see electronics and so on. So now, um, here is the microchip, and in the microchip we have uh, a trigger zone, which is on the um, previous um, platform, and then there's a timer, and the timer is set for two seconds. So when the, some, when the player steps into the trigger zone, it waits two seconds and then it sends a, then we go through a not gate, which tells the uh, platform to uh, become invisible. And so, take a look at the platform, and um, we'll see that we go in here to the sculpture, to physical properties, and right now it's visible, and yet when the character steps into the trigger zone and goes after two seconds and not gate sends a signal and it makes it invisible. So that's a very easy um, little bit of logic there. Let's go over that again. Trigger zone, timer, two second delay, through a not gate over to the tweak menu for the platform. And those are just uh, duplicated for each of the platforms. Every platform has the same um, logic and the trigger zone is on the previous platform so the trigger zone for this platform is on this platform so when the character or the player lands on this platform after two seconds this platform will disappear so the interesting thing about that is that it gives the player a little bit of a, a tension a little bit of a impetus to to not dawdle they've got basically two seconds and you can change that down to one second or three seconds or whatever you'd like to do. Now this next one we see here, and let's just turn off the zones for a minute. Um, yeah, let's see here, zones. Okay, so here as the player is playing, they don't see any way to get to the top of that uh, construction. We need to get to the top, we'll say there's something up there we need to get to, and the player has no uh, visible way of, of seeming to be able to do that. So let's go in and uh, let's um, play again as the character. Alright, so now we've got to get up there. doesn't look like there's any way to do it. And so as we get closer, we enter a trigger zone, and this time instead of the platform becoming invisible, it becomes visible. It's the same idea. And so when you step on this, another um, trigger zone is activated and the next platform appears and then on this one, a next platform would appear. Now, I didn't do that next one because I want to show you how the, I did it. So we're going to go to edit mode, we're going to go into show hide, and we're going to show our platform. So I've got a platform here that doesn't have uh, any uh, logic attached to it. So we're going to do two things. We're going to go into our um, gadgets, we're going to go to our sensors and inputs, and we're going to grab a trigger zone. And we're going to put that trigger zone basically near or on this platform because when the player gets on this platform, we want it to affect the next one. So we'll just put this right about there. 
and then we'll go into that trigger zone and we can see that it is basically set for that platform. We can three dimensions, you have to make sure that uh, you check all your dimensions to make sure that that's covered. And it looks like that platform is pretty much covered. It'll affect that player when he gets there. So when the trigger zone is triggered, uh, something happens here. What happens here? We go into the tweak zone, uh, the tweak menu, and we go over here and it is now invisible. We want to change that to visible. So now, when the player steps on the trigger zone, he will now make this platform visible. So it's a very simple thing. So let's go ahead and continue with our with our play, play mode, and we are right here. And now we see that the next platform does appear. All right, let's go back here and try again. There. <laughs> Not doing very well here, am I? Okay, here's the platform. All right, now the next one. Now. I guess that's a little bit far of a jump for this good old guy. I didn't really consider that. Let's go into our edit mode, and we can see that oh, it doesn't seem to be too too hard. But let's go ahead and make it easier. We'll put that there. Now, what we can also do is we can um, duplicate that one and put it up here, and that maybe will allow the player to get to the top. Um, need to also go in and do the same thing with this, and that is create a, a trigger zone. And just put that there. You see the trigger zone is on that platform there. Okay. And then we need to, again, go into this tweak menu for this platform and make that go um, visible when it receives input from the trigger zone. So, so those are two examples. One example where we have disappear disappearing platforms. It's, it's a great gameplay uh, effect. It just adds a little bit of interest for players who are doing platforming. And uh, we have moving platforms, we have all kinds of platforms. Uh, this one here is just the opposite. This one, they are invisible when it starts, and they become visible as we, as we uh, jump. Let's see here, let's go back and let's get rid of these things. And now we can see that um, we're going to play mode. All right, let's see now. So, as we get close, here's the first platform. I turn invisible afterwards. Oh, missed it. All right. I think you get the idea. I don't want this demo to go on forever. Let's go over here. I want to show you some other uses for invisible objects. Now, let's say you're doing a, a scene where you want the player to be able to see through this, but you don't want them to go through. All right. And that's happened in several of my games where I, I have a forest scene and I want them to be able to see something. It's important. I don't want them to get there. I want them to follow a trail. So what you can do is you can put in an invisible object, invisible block, and now I can't I can't jump through this. If I can still see through it, I just can't jump through it. And again, that's an invisible block. And there's an, also another use for these invisible blocks is sometimes in a game you want to keep players in the game. You don't want them to accidentally or or intentionally go off. Uh, the uh, the game area, and so I put, put these boxes up around, and here's another example. Now, we don't want this box to be seen, and so what we will do is we'll go into edit mode, and we will click on this, and we'll go to physical properties, turn off visibility, and there now. Again, the player doesn't know it's there, can't see it, but just he can't go off the edge. He can't go off. He can't move in that direction. So this is a great way for controlling players' uh, movement in a game where they're not aware uh, that they're being controlled. And then we also have the, uh, the disappearing and appearing platforms over here as a gameplay um, effect. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this little demo and uh, learning more about using visible and invisible um, platforms and objects. And I hope to see you back again soon.